Speaking of a cherry. Oh my goodness. What we got today, man. <laughs> that was a long cherry. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. I already had a big bat of crippy. <laughs> It's in my go-to really? right now, so yeah. yeah. That trip is gas, for sure. Uh, I need to get... So first off, welcome back, everybody. Episode 35 of the High Rollers. It's me and RC, chilling, but we got a lot of news. Sorry for missing last week. Uh, we'll, we'll fill that in <laughs> as to why. <laughs> but first things first, happy birthday to me. Uh, it'll be a week by now. As of recording this, but happy birthday to me. Second, happy Halloween, everybody. For those that are uh, listening to this in the future, because we're recording on Halloween. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what was I even saying about? Oh yeah, so THC pills. What do you know? Ooh. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> so. My dispensary started selling some. And, uh, I honestly, a lot of this new stuff that comes out recently, I'm like, it's kind of okay. Like, the new cannabinoid phase has been okay for me. Uh, it really hasn't been game changing like they were really saying it is. Uh, edibles for me have always been hit or miss. Um, now that's just the first thing. I, they're, I'll always say they either don't work at all or they work too much and don't have an off switch. Um, and then, um, tinctures is another one that's like, they're decent, but they taste terrible and they feel just so gross in your mouth. Um, Not for me. What, what is that? So like, basically it's like you, it's like droplets of weed. Like it's like these, from these little vials Ooh. and you just okay. drop it underneath your tongue. And nah, I don't like that. Yeah. Like. It's hit or miss. Like, if they hit, but, like, it's just... Ew? I don't know. I don't know. You can make them yourself, too, out of, out of your own weed, too. It's cool. Uh, but I need to find me some dabs. I just need to find me some dabs. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested in that. I've, I think I have some for you if you... I can yeah. put you on. Yeah, you need to... Uh, we'll, we'll talk after the cast, because... Uh, this... Uh, all we're saying is that we are definitely in the soccer right now. <laughs> you have a rig? Uh, no, but I can get another one. I, on, my main way I used to any, uh, before was I had a, a pin. I would just pack. A Yocon yeah. Evolve. I used to have. Man, that thing used to go with me everywhere. <laughs> I remember that one pen. The only time I saw that pen was, uh, Hollywood Nights. I did not hit. Yeah. Uh, I'm telling you... Dabs be different. And basically having mobile dab pins, which is uh, how I got reintroduced uh, into this uh, smoking hobby. Yeah. Uh, what about hash rosin? What now? What is hash rosin? Is that supposed to be a strain? I don't know. <laughs> no, it's like rosin? rosin. Oh, rosin. So. Yeah. Yeah, like, there's all the types of different... There's wax, there's shatter, there's r live resin, you know, there's... Oh, man, uh... There's sugar. I mean, we covered it. Butter, we covered it with uh, your favorite coaster. It sucks, so they gave us all the different types of dab, uh -huh. or different concentrates, and what they were in manufacturers. <laughs> uh, but my favorites were always shatter and wax. Uh, shatter can inevitably... Turn it into wax if you get it melt melty, but yeah, like scooping it in with the wax was so easy with the scooper. Just plop it in, or you just scoop it with the, with the tool and the spoon. Oh my god, I need to dab again. Basically, everybody. <laughs> Check. Um, yeah, Dang, that's what I've got. <sighs> just like the dabs around here. Uh. I mean, I gotta go to DC and probably get to be surprised, but around here they're overpriced. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, but yeah. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and okay. 
It has been, uh, it was a bit slower, but we accumulated, uh, excuse me, can't speak now. We have accumulated some news over the two weeks. And honestly, it is looking like we're going back to bi-weekly because of, uh, it is kind of the end of uh, the season and the technically the end of uh, season one of the podcast. Because yeah. Last thing because uh, you, can, you can say, it, actually, yeah. We recorded the first episode like over a year ago now, actually. You said it was the 26th we recorded yeah, it last year? October. Yeah. Yeah. So. A year. It's been a year. And to celebrate that, I uh, honestly am not even sure yet. Uh, we're gonna have people come on. We're gonna shit posts. You already know. We'll think of things. But uh, yeah, I maybe another giveaway in order. <laughs> I'd be down. I have something to give away. I mean, ah oh, man. But yeah, it's been a year of this shit. Thirty-five episodes. So. Yeah, 35 plus, I don't know how many bonus episodes, actually, but... But yeah, there's definitely some extra content in there. Uh, Some of those episodes reach three hours plus. (laughs) If everyone... If someone has listened to all of them, you're a trooper. And honestly, you're an honorary high (laughs) roller at this point. Because, uh... You gotta be pretty blasted to go through all that. (laughs) Oh shit! All right, let me get plastered now. But well, before that, before that, let me get let me get some of this because we have some uh, we have some ridiculous news um, and some crazy news. Let's get out of here. Um, and we're just gonna get this out of the way first because um, just for the tone shift, uh, it won't be just random uh, in the middle of the news. So first things first. Uh, there was an accident on roller coaster in Happy Valley in Shenzhen. Apparently, uh, this is an SNS compressed air launch, and incident took place as the train rolled back from the launch and it did not stop properly, causing the train to hit the station. Uh, yeah, if there was eight injuries, no deaths. Unfortunate that it even happened. Uh, you can see the train is even off balance a little bit. Like, it's off camber off the tr- off the, uh, the track. Yeah, it's a pretty distressing little scene. But, I, I, um, for- fortunately, there was no deaths. Nobody, no lives were taken. And hopefully, everyone's able to recover in a timely manner and able to live a still fulfilling life. Um. Yeah, you you really don't want this stuff to happen, uh, especially these big launches. Like I feel like now with I don't I, I don't know if that had anything to do with the launch. I don't think it did, but it was like maintenance issues, like the sensors failed, and that shouldn't have happened. That really should, you know, like I mean, there's been love taps a few times in the U.S. Right, like, but with these launch coasters. Rollbacks are much faster than like two, three miles an hour. So, yeah, I'm just I like I said I can not reiterate any more that so happy that the lives were lost. You know, and it doesn't it looks like it wasn't that bad. It probably is super traumatic. I can imagine though. On to the insane news, where basically. <laughs> I am uh, so happy nothing uh, nothing actually happened in in this incident here but uh, at Glenwood Caverns and this park can't seem to get a break with crazy news in the past like few years um oops probably was not even that one yeah like this was I found this articles uh, or I found articles on this before like not even in the theme park like Twitter sphere like this was released like on mainstream media days after like it was like Saturday and this got released like late last night um but regardless at Glenwood Caverns 
Authorities found a 22-year-old man. I heard it was 2022. I'm not sure. I think it's, but around 20, early 20s, dressed in black, color tactical clothing, bearing patches, dead at an amusement park uh, in Glenwood Caverns. Uh, he was heavily armed with a semi-automatic rifle, semi-automatic handgun, multiple loaded magazines. Yeah, you get the picture. Um, explosives he, too. Yeah, he had self-made explosives, uh, improvised. Uh, yeah. What the fuck? Like when yeah. I I was I caught like I read it and then I was reading more of the articles and I caught chills as I'm like. <sighs> This is why we're bringing this up first. Because he was in the park beforehand. <laughs> like, oh my god. Like, imagine walking in and this, this article could have been completely different if he didn't have an apparent change of mind. And took his own life, which... Oh my gosh. Yeah. What... The Glenmore Caverns is... It's not even their fault what happened here. I mean, we're, we, that's where we can kind of get into is... There's moments where people are like, oh, all this metal stuff, all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Honestly, it's at a point where if I don't see metals, I'm feeling a certain way walking into a theme park or an amusement area now. I don't know how you feel about that. Even Fun Spot has metal. Right. Well, actually, maybe... I don't know if Kissimmee does. I guess they technically... I don't think they technically do. But, like, Atlanta does. Yeah, like... I feel like Orlando, the Orlando one does, too, but Kissimmee doesn't. Because it has, like... The whole like old town section too, where Hurricane is. Hmm. So they don't really have medals, but the other two do. It's like there's no excuse. Like parks can have medals, you know. Like, especially with unfortunately what we have to do now. Yes, like you. Oh man, this is like I just hate thinking of the alternate reality. Essentially, I hate thinking of it. And yeah, I, I really just like I say, parks are a safe place for me. I go there, I feel safe. So for this, for him to be in before, like I, I, I even say like, where's, where's the cameras? Where's security on that? You know, like I feel like there's no way I can like go into King's Dominion just beforehand. I, like, I could just, like... Like, there would be security there. You know, there'd be cameras there. Um, I can think of multiple other parks, most of the parks, <laughs> that is... I can't just go in in the middle of the night or beforehand. You must have had, like, jumped fences or something and snuck in. I don't know. I, I get it's a scenic, mountainous area like it's literally on the side of a mountain but mm. I, I just think stuff like that really sh you shouldn't have any holes in security like that this should be all no everything plugged up mm. okay yeah so I like reiterate like the last one so happy that this was only what it is and even that it's still a horrifying and chilling story really uh, scary to think of and yeah uh man really uh i also hope glenwood Ca uh, caverns can get a break because like, this is literally i can't really it's not Certainly the full day, but now they could probably look and see. Hey, you probably have cameras, night guard, more fencing, more more of that stuff. But it's the, they're lucky to have learned from this and not something worse. 
All right, on to uh, on to everything else here. Uh, on to everything else. Photo validation at Universal. Uh, Kid Flash coasters seem to be doing well. HHN mask uh, situations here. Yeah, it has been a while since uh, we've guessed. Oh shit. Uh, RCT three. Uh, or RTT Roller Coaster Tycoon. New game coming out. Uh, King's Dominion. And Carowinds going back to seasonal. Oh. Hot topic. Uh, it was a hot topic like last week, but we're gonna talk about it now. Uh, Six Flags Great America is not gonna break either. Uh, probably Ayaba's coming up. Huh. That's exciting. And Universal stuff. All the app. Yeah, and stuff over the pond as well. So jumping on in. Photo validation at Universal. Have you dealt with this, RC? What's that? Photo validation at Universal. Yes, I've seen the things, but no, I always just scan my fingers. Still, wait. So it's still optional right now. It's not like forced. Yeah, but I also I haven't been in like close to two weeks. I feel like or like a week. Hmm. Wow. So last time I was there, it was optional. <sighs> what are you doing? Taking a hiatus from uh from Universal. I'm from the coaster. That's what I need to do. Well, I mean, I would go tomorrow because no one's gonna be at the parks because HHN's over. <laughs> it's got work. Oh yeah, you close. Ah. <laughs> uh... But, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go to Horror Nights tonight. Oh, my God. So, you crazy dastardly man. <laughs> bro, I'm going to Horror Nights the rest of the week, Tuesday through Saturday. Wait. Five nights in a row. Wait, they still have it after? Yeah, yeah the last night is Saturday the 4th. What the fuck? All right. Yes, sir. All five nights. Uh, that's uh, way too much for me, but uh, I oh, I will say, uh, the drunk riders. Uh, I think disliked it more than I did. <laughs> I know. From when I listened to the cast, yeah. And I'm like, damn, damn. Listen, I, I didn't get scared the whole time either, but I appreciated the production because that's really what it feels like. It feels like a big old... I know. Yeah. Big old show. It's so good. Oh, my God, man. Nightmare feels so good. I need to go watch that again. <laughs> well, they're probably going to get it through all it's Halloween. Yeah, that's that's definitely on the agenda. The twelve thirty nightmare fuel on Halloween. Well, I guess it won't be Halloween. We know that verbally. Still. No. I yeah, I will I'm curious to try this photo validation because uh this is what it says, get ready for some more seamless visit with photo validation. A new faster way to access select experiences. It's currently in technical rehearsal. Optional, blah blah. So yeah, I'm assuming it uses your face, like facial recognition. Yeah, and I just don't want to. I just don't want to do it because I'm always so like fried. Literally <laughs> <laughs> straight up. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be funny though? Just like, bro, I don't know. I feel like it might like mess up or something. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show up with the weed from the gas station then with the eye down to the cheekbone. <laughs> <laughs> show, just just <laughs> get the regular good old good good gas. And uh yeah. But uh, honestly for me I probably wouldn't do it cuz I just don't want another company uh having my face. Really? Yeah, like I don't I don't like that. They already have my fingerprint. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I get biometrics can make things easier, but I feel it should be in a 
smaller scale for businesses, enterprises, uh, within a max 100, 200 people. Not hundreds of thousands to upon millions that come on in and out of the park. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I was really a fan of that. But it does make going in and out very easy. So I will say there are benefits, but yeah, the inherit they're a privacy issue. Yeah, that's that that's like that can trump a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a yeah, it's a whole new topic. Yeah, I feel like they have my <laughs> like all my fingers at this point because <laughs> I've had to like you've seen it. I've had to like redo my thumb each time, and I'm pretty sure now I know it's my right thumb. But <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right, but uh, curious to see what your guys' thoughts are on uh, photo validation, Universal. <sighs> Kid Flash, though, they seem to be. I don't know if they're open at the. Uh, maybe uh, they keep teasing as if they're open, but uh, they're still not open. I don't think. And I feel like it would have been a great time with Hunt, but I don't know. I could be bugging. Maybe Christmas Town or whatever they do. They're winter event they'll uh, have it open because it's more family oriented so it's a good time to open it who knows regardless they the light packages on them look uh fucking phenomenal and i hate how i have to uh say it like that but it's true <laughs> they look fucking fantastic uh the roar light package if even if those write terribly skyline even if those do terrible and they have to quit making rides they need to just stick to those life packages and put those on existing rides. They look fantastic. Like, that. they look so... It's nothing like we've seen before. It's not just LEDs going around the whole thing. It's a whole, like... You can put whole art and pictures and images and moving. It, it's so good. It's so good. But yeah, that'll be nice to even look at. Like, it'll be cool for even the... Uh, parent with the beard to just be like oh wow it's kind of cool while his uh the child goes on kid flash <laughs> uh but yeah so uh i don't know i doubt this is still a thing now but uh, there was a point where hhn monsters uh had no mask like they were having walking around with no mask or anything um I don't seeing that. There was Jungle of Doom with no characters. It was like two weeks ago this happened. Um, and there was another place they had no mask on. They had that, they had only makeup on. And then um, apparently it was cleaning chemicals in the mask affected nearly all the scare zones. And yeah, apparently the cleaning chemicals. Uh, uh, what's with yeah. that? I don't know if, if this was Universal <laughs> Hollywood that this happened at. So. Cause I don't I don't think Jungle of Doom is even at a um uh Orlando right like I I didn't go to that scare zone. Mark Mark just went to Hollywood. Really? What do you Andy wrote that too. Yeah. What does he uh think of? The, what does he think of that? That H H N. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, well, I already know what he thinks of X2, but what does he think of, uh, did he go to HHN at all? Yes, he did. Yeah, what does he think of that one compared he to... All the houses. I'm pretty sure they're like the same houses as ours, Are except for like one of them. They have like six houses, they don't have ten, yeah. I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, so what is he, I mean, I guess it's inherently worse then, right? <laughs> yeah. He said it, I, I can't remember exactly what he said to be honest, bro. <laughs> no, it's all cool. But yeah. I always forget that HHN is in both of the uni uh, Universal Studios parks. Yeah, he, he didn't get to go to Not Scary Farm, though. Yeah, that I... Kinda suck. That's where I'm going next year. I'm telling y'all. Uh, especially if it has more of a regional I vibe. I have open accelerator, bro. Um, we talked about that last cast, right? 
Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, I need to get it open though, like at least by next year. I I, I think every time. I, I think they're done, bro. Hope not. <laughs> like, I hope not too. But like, man. Uh, I, I don't know. Just just how 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 they moving with it right now. Uh, they might just be saying they they, they cutting ties. They're done. We'll see. Um. So, you ever play Roller Coaster Tycoon? So, wait, which ones did you play? Really? Ah, oh, I don't know. Which one was it? Planco, I think, briefly? So you played yeah, Planet Coaster, Coaster briefly. That's it? Yeah, just a, just a little bit. The Daily Coastal was Icebreaker. Today? Yes. Ew. Well, well, I guess it's not spoiling because this won't be posted, but... Yeah, that's disgusting. Um, fuck, Poop Breaker. Yeah, this one should be cold. Um, yeah, a new Roller Coaster Tycoon game might be coming out. Um, let's see here. Come on, let me sh see if I can find it. Okay, so... Of course it would move away from the article I'm reading. I love Screamscape's website. Like, Screamscape's pretty good, you know... For you know and stuff, but I do not understand how things are archived. Like going through this is uh, now. Let me know if I'm just dumb and someone could yell at me. But I swear, going through this is just not easy. Um, Rogers Tycoon. Uh, it's finally known by its fans. Release expansion packs. Blah blah. After seeing the Rogers team move into the mobile gaming space. Aligned with some poorly received spinoffs, Rollercoaster Roll Tycoon will return to its roots with the release of Rollercoaster Tycoon Adventures Deluxe this November in digital download and physical release formats. Huh. That's kind of cool. According to Atari, which, yes, Atari still exists, everybody. Uh, this latest version of uh, the game that blended theme park fan in with video game enthusiasts uh, will be released on the newest consoles, and uh, PC. Wait, isn't it available to play on PC? What the fuck? It's what? Well, get, get, get with the times, Atari. <laughs> the add-ons on the standard RCT of its title release. So, basically, RCT, Roll Course Tycoon 1, maybe 2, mashed together with the HD graphics. So that's coming out in November for people that like that. I know there's people that do like Rogers Tycoon too. Uh, prefer it over three. Um, and yeah, for me, I definitely not get this because uh, I have no, I have no new console. I'm not playing this on my Switch. I I, I need to sell my Switch personally. It's, and uh, yeah, I just piece you need PC. Uh, ports in uh, 2023. I'm sorry. Um, otherwise, it's cool. It's cool. I think they need a modern roller coaster tycoon game. That'd be awesome to compete with uh, Planet Coaster. But a lot of the people that made or the team that literally made Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 works on uh, Planet Coaster now. So <laughs> that'd be yeah. kind of a rough thing to do. Yeah. Regardless, that's that's cool. That's happening because those are the games that got me into into being an enthusiast. Like, I remember when I was still scared of them. I looked loved looking at them though, and I would get inspiration from looking at them for my parks. You know, and yeah, I've always been making parks since literally elementary school days. Like, and I've had great memories with those games. So I hope more people do as well. Yo, know, if you haven't played them, give it a shot. I. I think it would be worth it, in my opinion. Uh, first GCI hybrid is coming, though. Where? <laughs> I think it's China. I'm not going to hold you, but... Uh. Yeah. Um, 
Now, GCI is recognized for exceptional wooden roller coasters, has announced that it is building its first wood and steel hybrid coaster in China. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, the coaster provis- Ooh, I love the name of it, because you know me with Yetis. Uh, <laughs> the coaster provisionally named the Anger of Yeti will reach... Uh, God, I really wish we were not dumb Americans and I could just read regular metric system and not be poisoned with Imperials. But will reach 26.2 meters in the height with a total of track length of 789.52 meters. And passengers will enjoy speeds of up to 78.9 kilometers an hour. That's not bad. I, I can't. Probably like, like, what, like meters. 100 feet or something? 150? I'm doing the conversions now, so. Uh, 26. It's 85 feet, actually. What the fuck? Twenty-five <laughs> feet tall. Okay, it's not okay. That's that's like that's average funny, for a Woody. It's average. It better have like a bigger. It better have a longer, like a, a taller drop. Like it better like go um, down like a. And otherwise, um, it's not that. You know what? You want all the track length. What's the track length? Uh, oh, barely just under. Twenty-six hundred feet. It's twenty-five. Oh my god! What? It's twenty-five. That's cake. That's cake. <laughs> It's 2,591. That's cake, bro. <laughs> That's baby right there. Oh. Well, I don't know. Someone needs to, like, build something, like, double that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I need to see. That's what I would expect for China, but instead they go, well. Let me see how fast it goes. 78. It's like, it's like point nine. 50 or something. 48. Yeah, it's basically 50. It's 48.964, which would round it up to be 49 probably miles an hour. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be cute. You know? Yeah. No, it, I feel like it could either hit, like, it could be like switchback. Or it's gonna be like fucking Kentucky Flyer. <laughs> it's like it's gonna be one or the other. Like it's gonna just be like really like it'll actually hit, or it's gonna be like really like baby. So I'm wondering if like if there's gonna be more steel track on here than wood, because it looks like it's just kind of gonna be what they have already done so I'm kind of confused like it just looks like it's a wooden track with the steel supports like the hybrid track the hybrid coaster they already make I don't know maybe I missed something here let me, let me keep reading I read this ride's hybrid and wind steel structure creates a groundbreaking layout this firm announces it's a page yeah, I... I'm not seeing anything here. Maybe it's the first hmm. in China. I, yeah, maybe it's the first wood and steel in China. Like, for GCI. Yeah. So, that, that's cool, I guess. Alright, well... We need to take him to Rick, but... Uh... Universal Singapore looking to expand. Where, where was that? It's right here. Please take me to it. Please take me to it. While Universal Studios Singapore is essentially landlocked, uh, within the heavily developed tourist resorts world Sentosa, I'm here. This is what Screamscape is saying. I'm hearing early rumblings that a possible new Mazer plan to expand Master Plan. Those, those typos, Jesus Christ. Master plan to expand the theme park may rely on taking over some of the property next door used by one of the two golf courses on the island. Consider this a long-term growth strategy that has a lot of hurdles to pass before any kind of expansion would be allowed to happen, including the end of the gift courses. Jesus, these typos. Is, he must be just typing this on iPhone real quick. Auto-correcting is just going. He just doesn't care. No proofreading. Uh, <laughs> regardless, Singapore is looking to expand. That's interesting. I mean, it Very makes nice. sense with Universal. Article. What'd you say? Screamscape article. Yeah, yeah, it's a Screamscape article. It's a coin flip. 
But this seems like, you know, it could be pretty plausible also with what Universal has been doing recently with all their expansion. Trying to give proper competition to Disney and also show their worth. Uh, really, though? I think the main way they do that is... Uh... I think that's, like, the part like doesn't uh, isn't actually owned by Universal, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think like it's owned by the like... government. Yeah, they but, just like bought the French or like bought the uh, rights to use the stuff. Which, uh, but that's what they're saying. Uh, this is all expected to happen until uh, 2023 or 2030. Excuse me. So, yeah, it would be a bit. That's what he's saying. Uh, that's crazy, bro. Think yeah. about right now, parks in 2030. We'll definitely have a T Rex mm. somewhere. We'll have a T Rex. What are they going to well, call crazy the first 500 foot coaster? The ultra coaster? Polaris. <laughs> uh, that's what they're wait. That's what Cedar Fair is waiting for. Just to use Polaris, Polaris or Centurion. Apparently. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Centurion would be fucking sick. A uh, 500 foot coaster. Holy shit. Okay, but if they actually like themed it to gladiators and like had us like diving into like a coliseum or something i would be down with it but they're just gonna put us in a in a orange lunch box yeah. an orange pavilion <laughs> uh, uh with no theming and get to do something to it, bro and i get like with coaches like that like you don't need theming but like i would like it to bite me up for the ride. I don't need it on the rides before. Like, yeah. Uh, will, will the GP ride a 500 foot coaster in the US, do you think? Yeah. Will they actually? They would in the US. Oh, I don't think they would. They would in the US and the Middle East. Because they're about to in the Middle East. Uh, in the US, they would because we're crazy and the only ones that have 400 foot coasters anyway. So. <laughs> 500 feet is so crazy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, that's it's, actually it's pretty nuts. I think that's the limit, though. Until, like, they start making yeah. more suits or something. And helmets. Yeah, nah. But, like, that's okay. Like, that'll last... That's gonna last a long time. Like, and then technology will keep getting crazier. I'm just, like, still thinking how the hell you maintain that. Like, I... How the fuck am I gonna tell a human being... To walk, to walk up <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking nuts, actually. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Bro, they... But, like, they have to be, like, people that take their job seriously. No, I mean, have you ever seen those videos of, like... God, I used to that's do it. Current. I used to do it and, like, see how far I could watch them. And I just could never make it that, like, to the very end. Those videos of like people climbing those like a thousand foot like cell towers, or, like hundred of feet like like hundreds of feet tall cell towers, and you just see like, oh my god, they're like the the tiniest, the tiniest like thing they're climbing up. They're climbing up the tower themselves. They're just clamp clamping up and down. Wait, okay, okay. Um, you're telling me like you wouldn't so you put on the harness and you have like the big like cable with like so basically like, you're like holding like the cable and you have like the clip right like you're like safe like you're like locked on oh my god and you're climbing up that you would not climb up the thousand foot tower and change the light bulb hell like, no they get paid like hella hella money bro i know they get hella money but uh you also a, also a good amount of them not, not a lot a lot but good enough lose their lives <laughs> And, uh, you said lose it. You think you're gonna get blown off the tower or something? You're gonna be, cause like even when you, as soon as you get to the top, you can just like hook yourself oh right on God. to the rail and you know, oh. would be fine. Hold on. You know? Okay, so even if I, even if I'm fine and I'm dangling for like an hour or so waiting for someone, that sucks. And I'm t like, that's terrifying. And that's this is this is not yeah, cool. Why would you be dangling? <laughs> Because I, I misplaced my foot I'm once because I'm not perfect. And I... What do you mean? Uh, it's just that high. I, I imagine, like, I could, like, smoke a blunt and then 
Find that to <laughs> change the way Bob and come back down personally. There's no way in my mind I could go. I could I could go up even like 50 feet on that shit because I'd be looking up I'm like that is so <laughs> fucking high. I cannot imagine humans standing there to do that. We need a ro- That's what we need robots for an AI for to do that shit. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's crazy that you would do that, though. I would definitely do that. Yeah, I, I would. The most I would do is climb a, ch- a chain lift for a coaster, and even then, I would be like, kind of wary. Oh, the whole I want to climb the so bad, dude. Yeah, I would do it for stuff like that. But when we started uh, going, ex- literally ladders, like I'm climbing, and thousand feet no that, that, that's crazy that, that's a little crazy <laughs> See, i don't know it's kind of different like it's like the ladder is latched onto the tower like it's like very secure like that's not i, don't, I feel like that's still people are still i'm just saying you gotta look at the stats and stuff because i'm just like oh man it's... Mm, I used to watch them. There was this guy who used to stream on Twitch. I used to watch. Oh my god, he would stream himself literally. Do, that was his job, and he would be climbing these towers, these cell ones. I'm like, oh my goodness, and he was just chill as fuck. He was just like ha- discussing with everyone, just climbing up, placing the bolt, which would be like ten minutes, and then he would climb down another like two hours. <laughs> yeah, that that stuff is is crazy. The fact that like. To me, people that do stuff like that, like, like F1 drivers, and and then cell phone or cell tower servicemen, you people are like superhumans. Like, <laughs> you're built different, for real. Oh no. Would you? So you're telling me you would take a job as a, a cell tower serviceman? Yes. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. <laughs> Why don't you just work at, uh, why don't you just uh, become a maintenance man and climb 305 every day? That is not a bad idea. <laughs> so I'm like, you would do it every day at sunrise and you can get the pictures that all the maintenance men show to me. Uh, speaking of which, we got some stuff to talk about with uh, with that later, man. Uh, it'll be kind of brief, but it was a good time. Uh, oh, show. Yeah, what were you talking about here? Five hundred foot coasters. I wouldn't climb them. Having some climb. <laughs> so you're telling me you would climb the five hundred foot coaster every day? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I guess so. yeah. apparently people aren't. Uh, apparently, it wouldn't be that hard to find people to do that. <laughs> Let's see here. Though. I do it. So apparently, uh, during the peak of the pandemic, uh, market reacts to quarter three theme park financial result release dates. Uh, yeah, a lot of them are, a lot of the parks are going to announce their quarter three, which is, I think it's pretty important, right? It's the summer season. Now, so. Uh, but Six Flags drops to 1894. <laughs> Disney and Universal... Disney has a steady drop. Basically, all these parks are having a steady declines right now uh, in the stocks. Which, in my opinion, if you're really looking at it, the world right now, uh, stocks are just, I mean, they're kind of fine, but a lot of people were, if they're using mm. them for like hedge funds and stuff, or if they're using it for generally just throwaways, which, I mean, you're not really making money from. Six Flags or Tita Fair stocks. I'm gonna be real. Uh, yeah, they they were just making a few enough to just kind of throw more money into other things. Yeah, they're probably like, all right, let me throw this into something that's working right now. In my opinion, 
also the investments you know who knows we they need those quarter reports and with a the drop there always will be people buying in to see the rise so yeah all right but yeah i think generally it's based off of the based on the economy right now what people are moving their money with in my opinion uh so the hot topic here I'm going to talk about it. King's Dominion. Carowinds. Going back to his regular season operations. It's better. I have thoughts. Up. And y'all might hate us for this. But it's just inherently better. It's inherently better for these parks to be this way. And here's why. Here's why. Last tangent of season one uh well first do you have any do you have your reasons why <laughs> i mean it's better for it to be closed for you know two months and they do and then they're ready to go and get all the rides commissioned all that shit you know and they're not operating the park while trying to do that <laughs> it's just People will use the argument of, well, <laughs> who's the argument of other they parks? They don't have the staffing. Like, it's like, they might as well just close. All so. right. I'm going to play devil's advocate again. And these places like Charlotte, how can they not get staffing? You know, they're, they're Charlotte. I, there's so many people there. Let's, I mean, I do agree. The pricing yeah, but needs Carol to be. Isn't isn't like a close drive to like the actual like that close of a drive to the actual city mm -hmm. that's so, and that and even like the area even if you were to pay more these jobs are like you had to think about it <laughs> they hire you and then throw like 40 hours at you that's what i'm saying like and, and then they lose a lot of people so and people like really a regular person do they want to be a write up? Like, do they actually enjoy? It? Oh. Like, like <laughs> I'm not saying like, I'm just saying it's probably because it's of the back to work. But I'm not seeing you know, I mean, maybe at places like Dollywood, Cedar Point, uh, somewhere else, Hershey Park, where like they've built up in the area, so they've been around it, and now maybe they're doing a retirement job, or maybe they've worked there before and they came back, and the, you know, because like. Or they've literally have worked their way up and they've given them benefits at these bigger parks to where they can. I want it to be to where you could work at these places. And generally, like, if you wanted to do that, that'd be fine. But like you said, who wants to be a store clerk for five, six years at a music park? Who wants to be a ride operator for that long? People do a, a season, and half the time, no, seventy-five percent of the time, more they're done. <laughs> so really, I, I think it's that retention rate is just harder now. If you're paying them, given a good work ethic, work culture, you're gonna keep more people. Like, that's just factual. Like you have a good team, good a uh, a good uh, people leadership to push people uh, in the right direction, and how to treat things. Uh, also, yeah, it's that, that's one, one of the main things for Carowinds I'm talking about. For King's Dominion's sake, this needed to happen. This needed to happen. Uh, now, Carowinds is a little bit more iffy, but King's Dominion, you, you could you could probably even just say this because I'm about to take the hit here, but it was it's pretty obvious with King's Dominion why. Oh man. <coughs> yeah, with King's Dominion. <coughs> you took a hit, bro? Oh yeah. That Jesus Christ. 
But with Katie, it's much easier to say, yes, please, go back to seasonal. Because uh, when you would be in the parks, January through March, beginning of March, uh, basically 90% of the time you're asking yourself, why the hell am I here? Because uh, it would be, you'd walk in, and it would be too cold to run the rides. <laughs> or, they would close oh, beforehand. Oh my god, dude. Or they would close beforehand. The freaking, like, uh, the Christmas Town rides on Apollo's, bro. So cold. Yeah, like, I, it was already it was cold. Really disgusting. I'm sorry, like, I can't do rides in the cold. And there are some people that can't. For me, that's when I start shutting down. As soon as it gets like, as soon as it gets like forty-five degrees, and that, that I'm on the ride, it feels like thirty-five because of the wind. Like, mm. Mm. like timbers, I can do, but like shitty ride, like Apollos in the cold, like I'm not doing that. Hell, Intimidator, a few weeks ago was kind of getting like I kind of stopped because it was like any coaster that goes like mad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just can't. How cold was it? It was like 44. Jeez. And like, so yeah, on Intimidator, that like, it's basically like 30 mile, or it's 30. How, how was it this past, the last night of Bro. operation? What was the temps like? Freakishly warm. Like, it didn't feel right, honestly. Like how warm? Like 60? Bro, it was like 75. What? Yeah, at night? Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. So I'm that's like, wild. That's why I'm telling you, like, I can get into it when I get in the trip report, but, like, some of the craziest rides I had. Um, but, I, yeah, I, where were we even, where were we even going on? So, there's, there's people out there very adamantly. And I know it's his home part, but like theme park predictions, saying, and I'll, I was bringing up all the points he was saying, and I do agree with them, but there's only so much parks can do, because like, unless you get a, unless you become that supervisor or you become something else in the park, you know, it's not that fulfilling of a job, and I do think you should pay people to give people incentive to go there and then get, you know, if they do want to become more involved you know that's that's the stuff though so i think the fact that like you know the parks like sees uh, <laughs> uh really literally goes to the minimum wage and six flags the same thing they, they, they need to change that you know and uh hell i mean make it to where people feel like it's worth dealing with the bullshit please because that's why i try to make every you know Employee that I see, like I try, whenever there's something to make it easy as possible. Like whenever an operator is dealing with stuff in the lines, I know they have dealt with so much BS throughout the season. So yeah, that's really why I'm so like easy going and chill with it. Whenever there's like a policy issue, even though it doesn't make sense, I'm gonna talk about it later. Cause like I already know they've dealt with someone going crazy on them probably three or four times earlier this season. Like. Like, it's just a waste of energy from everyone, and, yeah, like, they already deal with so much, so I just want, I think the main issue is the pay, for real, like, if you even pay these places more, you're gonna have people that want to stay more, and you're gonna build that, uh, culture and that ethic, but, um, I, I do agree, the main point, these, and this kind of goes off to what I was thinking about for a while, a lot of these parks are regional parks. They are not resorts. Like, they don't have the resources like Universal or Disney or these parks that were fundamentally in warmer climates. And even then, look at Magic Mountain. <laughs> half the roster is open half the time. Like, even, like, they're a prime example of why you probably should have dead days. Or dead months, excuse me. It's not open. Um, and refurbing give TLC to your park exactly uh, people were using Dollywood as an example hey they're adding more days hey they have literally just built a new hotel they are a resort 
It costs a hundred bucks to get into the park. Like I, I don't think using Dollywood as an example is a good is a good analogy. It's not good because they are a completely different entity to the Cedar Fair Park, Six Flags Parks, and Seas Parks. And also, I'm sorry, I got to talk about this take. Uh, SeaWorld buying Cedar Fair would not make the situation any better. I'm not going to say the people that said it, but that was the worst take I've seen about this. And Literally, what? You're just asking them to get paid less. Like, uh, what? You're asking them to get less staff and less ethic at these parks that already have good ones like King's Dominion and like Worlds of Fun apparently and like Valley Fair like now it is the worst thing you could have them do is have SeaWorld come in and already and make things worse but I, apparently you guys like coasters enough that you only see coasters enough that uh that that's fine for you guys Phoenix Rising oh my god Penguin Trek which we're gonna get into but fucking Christ Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that take was so bad. I, I just had to rip into it. Uh, <laughs> like, like literally, like they're just gonna like say, "Hey guys, like here's some. They're gonna here's forty bucks a month to get into all of our parks." Like, come on, like seriously, we're already having we like like we had a good thing going. I'm literally Mike from Breaking Bad right now. Like, <laughs> and then, like I'm just saying, we just gotta accept what it is. Like, see, the fair needs to pay more. They need to work on that ethic in those places. And really, I think every park needs to give love to the lesser parks. Like, it's clear that there is favoritism, and I know that it's their money makers. But if you invest into something, people will go to it. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Especially these places in the middle of nowhere, like. Uh, like, there are some of these places you'll be driving through this year. Like, come on, RC. Like, we're like, what the hell? Like, are we, like, are, like, are, there's nothing. You know, there's nothing. You know, it's the general stuff you do, but there's nothing, like, amusement around. So if they build up these areas, like, no go-karting, no, like, family entertainment centers. And then they have those amusement places plopped there. They could just literally pull everyone in if they were to just make it new. Invest, build, give faith to do it. I mean, <sighs> easier said than done, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just passionate about the hobby. This is a fucking. I wasn't expecting this tangent to go this hard, to be honest. But this is a. Yeah, this is. It's a. I do think. To wrap it all up, King's Dominion it makes complete sense. Carowinds, it's a little more iffy, because I know it does get a bit warmer down there uh, in the winter. But I think these Maybe regional parks, you know. yeah, I'm like these regional parks need time to simmer down and get love. You know, not not so much foot traffic, not people always riding them, and literally getting the commissions, getting new trains, getting new wheels, so that there is less downtime during the season when it is open. Like. If you think about it, Fury was basically down what would have been down for the off season. <laughs> if they like Yeah. So in the middle of the main season where people are coming in the summer. So I just think these parks to ensure their main attractions are always up and running, have the most running time, they need to Yeah, they need this. So I, yeah, unless you were resort status, Universal, Disney, or Dollywood now, Silver Dollar City. I think, I think you should be uh, having a few months off. Come back strong. But yeah, that's basically the biggest of, of the news, I think. Everything else is kind of small after. Or is it? Because, uh, what did I see? What is, what is this about, um... It's Great America, okay. The Six Flags Great America is losing another ride. And they've lost, like... So, this is from Your Favorite Coaster Sucks. This is... But shout out to Your Favorite Coaster Sucks. The OGs of this shit. Uh, this is what they've lost since 2020. Because they are losing, uh... 
Well, I'll get into that, but Buccaneer Battle, Daredevil Dive, Condor, Mighty Gras Hangover, Revolution, Holiday in the Park, and what they've gotten since 2020 is a Skyscreamer, which is next year. Uh, and yeah, they're losing the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah, they're losing. Yeah, I mean, granted, this would be redundant in the park now because they're literally would have had they're adding a Zemperla ride that's a spinner. So, which honestly, Matt makes that addition terrible because if you already have something that works, unless that was unreliable, which I mean, I, I don't know if it was or not. Why are you getting the same ride and then replace? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I feel bad for Great America right now for that. At least they're not removing coasters necessarily, but you need those flat rides. You need those filler attractions for sure. Um, yeah. Come on, I'm really hoping for these parks right now. I'm feeling hopeful. I'm feeling grateful, man. Uh, I'm hoping they can bounce back and really hit it off, man. 2025. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying. Uh, so, I don't know. I think this is just a rumor someone threw out, but. Uh. I, apparently someone said. Hold on, hold on. So, here's, here's, here's their reason why they think this. So, Premiere is potentially doing the, um, refer. Right for Lock the Sponsor. And the reason why people are thinking that is the IAPA press conference list shows Busch Gardens Oyensburg with Premier Rides presenting two and two together. Or we're getting a Premier Rides Giga. <laughs> what do you think? What? <laughs> did, hold on, hold on. Did you just say a Premier Rides Giga? Yes. Bro, uh, <laughs> what, what are you talking about? That's not a thing. I'm sorry. That's, Bush Gardens will that's make it a, a thing. thing. Bro, when it, since when has B&M made family coasters? And since when uh, has a B&M made swinging axle suspended coasters? That, that does not mean... No, dude, that's... No, that's that's very far fetched. That's oh that's... yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm shit posting, but I'm just I saw also I saw God speaking of bad takes. I saw a take of someone that said if you were to have any manufacturer build a giga, what would it be? So it's a premiere. I'm like <laughs> premiere. Uh... Oh man, that's not that bad. What? Get the. Oh my god, they're so bad. I hate Premier. Oh. Uh, bro, they just do clones and literally, like. Yeah, they literally just do clones. And just. I can't I can't think of the word right It's on the top of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm not gonna say bid, because that's just given, but. Washed out attractions. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> just leave, just leave feeling like a flat soda, bro. Like in every one of them, besides like, obviously I haven't written Mister Freeze, and I haven't written Full Throttle, but like I said, if you only had two good, like it's like the Arrow thing, you only got two or three good rides at your whole portfolio, mid. Yeah. Well, all I know is I hope it's not that. I hope it's a. Uh, I mean, how would they even really do that? Would they, would they just put it on or like cause the track? Did they make the track like? Well, now the interesting thing is like, what about the trains? I don't think I don't the know. trains are changing. So then they're probably just like making that track gonna like form it never like the steel and like replace it or something <laughs> i think it's safe to say that uh the most excited i am about uh 
this project is the animatronic. So hopefully animatronics Yeah, uh Yeah. I mean I wasn't expecting them to like add anything, it's just you know. Lot is lotness, so if they can make it smoother, you know, where my knees don't ram into the trains, which I'm, I'm not gonna keep going on with takes I'm seeing. I'm just, I'm just not. <laughs> but yeah, there's just better rides generally. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if that's a pretty sure that's a pretty lukewarm, cold it should be a cold take, but. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, press conferences released for IAPA. Where did they see those? Oh, right here. So, uh, IAPA is coming up, man. That was uh, I think that was our third episode was IAPA. Covering that or something. Uh, but I remember that was a fun one, so I'm excited to do it now, especially with... Uh, Especially, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be more fun, just seeing seeing all the trolls just trolling this time, man. Like, but Cedar Point's gonna be there with Zamperla. Shocker. Uh, see, that would have been cool if he still didn't know. Excuse me. Hershey Park and PTC. Uh, Sally Dark Rides, Subsea System, Sea World Premier Rides, Bush Gardens, B and M and Sea World. Holiday of Vacoma, RMC, and Silver Dollar City. Uh, Intamin Kidia Investment Group. Oh, ho, ho. oh, you don't understand, bro. Like, we're gonna get information on Falcon's flights. Yo. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, Gravity Group and Six Flags Great Escape. So we're having a lot of collabs right now. I, I can see why people are saying they could probably see why Premier's uh, potentially doing something with them. Uh, Premier Giga. I'm just gonna tweet that. And see how people get mad at me. Uh, Falcons Creative Group. Uh, Extreme Engineering, SeaWorld Pro Slides, and Prilla has their own. I hope they have a new concept for their multi-launch because, oh my lord. Uh, Zamperla, Triotech, yeah. Yeah. So they, they throw them all in very quick and fast, for real. Um, those are the press conferences. I, who knows if there's going to be other things announced. Uh, hopefully we do, man. Because uh, IAPA really hasn't been popping, popping for the last, like, right before pandemic. Which, I mean, I get it. I get it. But, uh, man, I'm really waiting for that 2019 year again. Like, where it was just like, holy crap, we're getting so much stuff. And then it sucked because we had to wait two years for some of that stuff because of the pandemic. So, but it was awesome. We were getting so much stuff. That was actually, like, interesting, good across everywhere, across the globe, across the country. Yeah, I'm waiting for that again. I'm really waiting for that, like, spark again. Because I really, that was another reason that brought me back was that 2019 IAPA. Uh into the hobby. Now, I'm not going to be leaving anytime soon. Too many homie, homies now. Uh, I'm too invested now. But, yeah, I'm just... Oh. I'm I'm hyped to see for that next really IAPA where I'm just, like, wanting to throw myself out the window from hype. No, but, like, Falcon's Flight is so hype. Oh, no, yeah. I, I, I mean, the thing is, that's one thing... The only thing I'm hyped about looking at all of these. <laughs> Everything else, I'm like, oh, wait, SNS might be showing the, the axis. I don't know what seven. True. I don't know what seven is. I don't know if that's the park or a group or anything, but yeah, they could show where the axis is going, so. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I, I'm always excited for IAPA, honestly, even when it's kind of okay there's always a few things where i'm just like you know the industry is cool you know and innovation doesn't always constantly happen it's not always a big pop i mean it, there's there's ebbs and flows so there's gonna be like i said it's gonna be times where we'll have kind of a growing you know dormant period 
until we get that big um, volcanic explosion of holy shit these parks are going insane with investments <laughs> yeah yeah it's gonna be yeah cool. regardless i'm excited uh when is it uh november 14th so that is two weeks from now from today as of forecasting uh yeah more falcons flight speaking of that uh yeah, that we there's a new picture of a dude in a crane, like two hundred feet up nasty. on a hill, and there's supports in the distance that are. I'm gonna look at the picture right now. Oh my god, the supports in the distance that just like are towering over him almost. Like what the fuck? Nasty. I just. I just can't believe this is actually. Oh my god! Bro, look at how much more track is like over there. Yeah, and that's definitely like I could see where. Are they really doing LSMs, bro? Like I gotta hear more about this ride, bro. Like I happy needs to happen. Actually, I do. I don't want it to happen now because time's moving a little too fast. But you get what I'm saying. Oh. Like I need yeah. to know. Like. Oh my god, this ride is literally like it, it looks like a like they just said, Entman, do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and to me, those generally tend to be the best layouts. Sometimes a bit, sometimes a bit of uh, restraint does help in the sense that like if they have space, they have to work around. Uh, they have to make a twister layout because of that, or they have to make weird elements or weird transitions because of that. Now, oh my god, I just noticed the people. Did you notice the people on the bottom under the crane? Like, yeah, why? It just shows the scale of everything to me. I know. Seeing them. Oh my god. That's nuts. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. I literally have it in the news as more Falcons flight creaming, and I'm literally, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied. I think, I think I, uh, think I can think of twice actually. <laughs> Bro, what in the world? Uh, oh my god, that's so crazy. Like, I literally can't stop staring at it uh, at this point. How do you even get this crane down? where he's at like what the f what the hell man they crane it down with another crane a bigger crane <laughs> I don't know isn't that nuts it's fucking crazy bro ah uh, well now um we deflate as we talk about penguin trick huh. or are we just gonna skip it just so how troll it is. Or Baggio. So, I will say, do you find it interesting that they're using mock trains? Because I'm pretty sure those are just mock trains. I don't know. Like, have you really looked at it? They look like the Copperhead <laughs> Shrike, like... And, like, the Manta. Yeah. So I, I think it's interesting because they're obviously using a thinner track profile, like it's not as wide, to make those fit. Right. Um, and I think it's interesting that Mach is working with B and M like that. This had to be mad expensive. I ain't gonna hold you. This this pro this coaster is probably so much more expensive than you would probably hate to believe, RC, and it probably hurts. <laughs> Like, bro, like, Mach and B&M are probably the most expensive manufacturers to work with right now. 12 mil for Penguin Track. You think it's only 12 mil? No. I can see it. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's like 15, 17 now. I have to hear Oh, my this. God. Maybe, yeah. Like, they have a show know. scenes, too. Like, Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that so whack? Oh, my God. They could build an RMD, bro. Like... <laughs> What are you doing? Like, oh my god. It's so nasty. Like, literally, let, build, let like, 
a wild mix. A or no, they this, could... this budget let's make a park. <laughs> well, I mean, we have made a park. Oh, I forgot what was it? No, I'm saying, let us like actually do it. We need to build it right <laughs> next to SeaWorld. And give us their budget. <laughs> we'll have like a better Halloween event too. <laughs> Literally. Oh man. Yeah, uh, I've heard mixed things about Hollow Scream. I, I, I uh, wish I went to BGW still because I dream like to the report, but y'all gotta really hear me out. Like I, I was just so burnt from this part, that park in the past few years that like, yeah, it, it'll be very unless I'm summoned to Beach Gardens. Like, I will not be going. Uh, Respect. So. <laughs> yeah, I, so I'm getting a I'm getting a fun card to Tampa, and that's it. <laughs> Respects. Oh my god, it's almost time to buy passes again. That's crazy, bro. So I was saying, I was at least just looking at which ones I'm renewing and stuff, and oh. which ones I'm getting. Feels bad, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I wonder, I don't know what Cedar the Fair is easy. For me, bro. Cedar Fair and Six Flags are locked in. Uh, yeah, I'm keeping my Six Flags for sure. And Universal, but the, everything else is optional. Like I actually, my, my uni doesn't expire for a while because I renewed it in like July or something. So, cool on that, but we need the others. Do you know if the uni just rolls over if you just are paying for it? I don't know. Hmm. Well, all I know is, I yeah this this is a stupid stressful time of the year for Tuesdays because uh, yeah we got to worry about what paths we're going to be getting, what ones we're not going to be getting, and for me I, I'm pretty excited. I'm not getting nearly as many passes, uh, and I will be uh, adding on a lot more instead of basically I'm switching out Bush Gardens or. Hershey Park with Bush Garden, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be a lighter year for me this year. This oh, yeah. coming year. I. Sure. There was times where I was like, I thought I was gonna deal, but I've looked back and I'm like, it's. I still think I'm gonna go get credits, but I think I'm gonna chill on passes. Might be like a Six Flags World Tour type of year. Ugh, sounds like an oppressive well, year. Throw in Cedar Fair. Sounds no like scene. you're asking for a year of disappointment. Ah, I don't think so. I'll go to like Dollywood and stuff. It'll be good. I think 2024 is going to be good. Ooh, y'all got to remember to wear earplugs for uh, your next trips to Dollywood when you go on Lightning Rod. Uh, Lift Tunnel. Yeah, also, that's kind of news. Though. Dad is Last Rides. It's past Sunday. Last Rides with, yeah. uh, with the launch lift. Yep. Yeah. Which, uh, honestly, for the past two weeks, a lot of enthusiasts were... Like, I was like, so many enthusiasts are going to Lightning Rod to get their Last Rides on it. For, uh, I want to turn up a lot, but... Oh yeah. Different things in the conference. <laughs> uh, that was that was crazy though. I'm still ha I'm still happy you came through to that. For real. Yeah. So Penguin Track, we even talk about it. It, it looks. Yeah. <sighs> like we're, we're not talking about this basically. Uh, that's all we had to say. What we had to say earlier. So. Uh, Universal Earnings. Was that actually news, or was that just, uh... What's up? I'm seeing if this is actually news or not. Basically, they're saying that the new... They're basically saying Super Nintendo World is, like... Basically helped them get a new record. For earnings, which 
Like I'm saying, Universal, that's good. I hope you guys keep it up and do it well. Don't turn into Disney. <laughs> that's all I ask. Please. And then... <clears throat> Mattel Adventure Park. Beginning construction. There's a... a Potentially got a bit of uh, construction happening, and this is the, uh, um, the park, what, uh, the park in Arizona. That's uh, being opened with the uh, Chance Hyper GTX. I don't know if there's, there's rumors there's going to be a Vacoma there now. Uh, I think people are just looking at the, the Chance, in my opinion, which I'm down to write it. I mean, it's the Chance Morgan. Big fan of, pretty big fan of Morgan, and. Uh, Planning Run's pretty fun. A bit overrated, but pretty fun. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm down. Not for that. Uh, there is a, that Southwest needs parks and stuff, and the fact it'll be themed. You know, especially for a lot of people growing up with Hot Wheels and uh, other Mattel products. It's gonna be cool. It'll be cool. Uh, but across the pond here, Angry Birds is leaving <laughs> Thorpe Park. <laughs> Up on. Which everyone seems <laughs> up, to be celebrating. Like, we say womp womp. <laughs> womp womp. It's like, that's not even a womp. It's like, it's a womp womp for even existing in the park. Like, why do they think that would... <laughs> why would they think that's even good for more than, like, six months? Like, that should have been an overlay. Nothing else. <laughs> it's, yeah, like... Ugh. Ugh. I'm glad it's leaving... Because I nothing against Angry Birds is just is what was it ever really big enough to warrant a movie and lands and yeah like like come on uh yeah it it, it was dated and it needs to go hopefully they could do something that actually is more timeless uh can age better and not in a few weeks um. But yeah, we we shall see. You know, who knows? <laughs> I mean, they always do something weird in those parks, for real. Like I forgot when I used to look at theme park worldwide vlogs all the time. You'd always be at Alton Tower or something or Thorpe Park, and they would show like basically areas that were just rethemed like two or three years ago, being rethemed again, and like it would happen again within two or three years. Like these rides or these areas, and I'm like. That just seems like a waste of money. I don't know. I feel like you think you're doing a cheap investment, but you're spending more money because you're doing these cheap investments that inherently become not as cheap because you're paying more because of inflation. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> not good. But yeah. Uh, hopefully it's something that can age better than... Angry Birds, which, uh, to be honest, like I said, I unless I was crazy or I didn't talk to those people, like I played it on my i iPod. Wow, that's crazy. I need no one even use iPods anymore. We just get iPhones. Uh, on my iPod with other people in Boys and Girls Club and like school for like maybe a few months, and that was it. You know, like. You know, I, I heard about it because it's one of the first mobile games, but, like, other games came out and other people played them. Like, I would probably think, you know, Clash of Clans probably has a bigger pull and all that for years and more people play it than Angry Birds. <laughs> I don't know. I can think of a few more mobile games that just have, like, Classic just... lands. But yeah. Um in general, uh I think they should try to get a stronger IP if they were to. Uh, go IP route. Or go with something whole original. When I go to a park I love to escape and IPs are great if they're done well, but making an original uh characters, original stories, original lore. Uh, for me, that goes the longest ways for the parks. That's why I'm super excited for Lost Island, in my opinion. Like, And the last thing here, 
This was the news I found very early in the morning. Uh, development to happen at the old Jazzland plot. But don't want to have anyone be excited here. Because uh, the developer signing a lease to take control, and basically what they're doing is uh, they're saying the Bayou's plan, the Bayou Phoenix's plan for the 227 acre site, which has approved, which was approved earlier this year, features hotels, a water park, youth sports facility, an amphitheater, retail outlets, and an 8.5 acre man made lake. And the movie No stand. ride. No rides, yes. So, it is now for me and everyone else. For me, it should be closure. Knowing that there is, you know, because there's always talks about bringing it back and people buying it and never doing anything with it. And it was in a dead limbo because we kind of knew it was never coming back, but people had slight hope. Now it is official. You know, it's going to be transition to this and a lot of this is starting next year um so it's not like it's going to be pushed back anything or delayed it's beginning and it's happening so yeah this project's costing 500 nearly 1 billion dollars yeah 500 million to nearly 1 billion so I you know jazz land at it's going to be sad because now all the stuff, you know, people going in there and in the abandoned areas, it's going to be gone. You won't be able to go there anymore. It's going to be all I, public and legal to walk into now. Shocker. <laughs> but no, it, the history of Jazzland will be gone. And uh, the only thing we'll have left is YouTube to look at it for. And that's kind of scary. Unless you were lucky yeah. enough yourself to have gone and get pictures of it or be a daredevil enough to go in yourself. I mean, I probably would have tried if I had the chance. Not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Explore. Oh, yeah. I definitely would have. What was the Woody that they that's still standing? Megazef or something? Let me see. What... Megazef, yes. Yeah, I'd go climb that. Megazef is a wooden roller coaster. What was it? Who was it designed by? I CCI. Think, um, oh. yeah. I wonder if it was good. Wait a minute. CCI Woody, yes. Hold up, is it gone? Or maybe, didn't it get, like, torn down? I thought it might have got torn down recently, actually. Yeah, I I think it's still there. Yeah. I think you can buy so it, it's though? About to get, um, it's gonna get torn down, then. Oh. You said buy it? What? I don't know why it's saying Megazeth will cost around $3 million to have the right back operating. Nah, that's, that's probably like an estimate from like back then. It says, whenever it first it says status removed now. I don't know if that's true though. There's no way they'd get that thing operating at this point. The thing looks kind of gnarly, bro. I'm not going to lie. Now that when I'm looking at it, it looks 2000 to 2005. That's so sad. Well, 4,000 feet of track, too. Pretty good length. It's standing but not operating. Yeah, yeah it's... No. We need to go and climb it before they change everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But Rest in peace to what probably is a good Woody. And honestly, they used... Uh, the steel supports for this, which I find shocking. It's 2000. Ah, interesting.
Well, uh, that is the news, though. You know, like, the news. Honestly, uh, we got just some trip uh, of life reports. Because, <laughs> really, uh, you haven't been to any parks, right? Um... Nah, oh, man, not, not since, not in 10 days. I haven't been to a park in 10 days. Mm-hmm. Been chilling, bro. Working, chilling. No park. Yeah. I got away and went to King's Dominion for the last day of haunt. But before that, uh, we, uh, a week ago before that, we celebrated... Uh, Timmy's birthday have with a costume party where you showed up as a monk. Flew in. Flew out. <laughs> and, Saw the people. And I showed up as a fucking Yeti. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, there was another costume that I was going to go with, but I'm going to save that for a special episode. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about it because it's so fucking stupid. Uh, but yeah, I yeah we had a great time. Happy birthday, Timmy! Happy birthday! Yeah. It's already happened, but obviously, happy birthday, Timmy! Uh, yeah, it was kind of getting wild there for a bit. Uh, I don't think anyone well. Apparently, few people were expecting to get kind of crazy, but it uh got kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, we had a great time. We that was one of the moments where I think people think when we say we smoke, you know, that's how much we think we smoke was that night. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. we smoked hella that night. Um. Yeah, 15. Well, you guys started before me, but 15 bong rips. 15. Very good time. I know well, what happened after. I have no clue because uh, you came back after. Oh, like the next day? Yeah. More bong rips. <laughs> All right, yeah, because RC was able to find cheap flights over here, so good times. Definitely gonna like look for more cheap flights. This shit was a good time. Yeah, fortunately you won't be doing it for parks because yeah, because there's no no parks right now. Uh, come play pinball or something. get something going now on Sunday I went to King's Dominion to get the last Raz on that 305 I went got in around 10 I said fuck it let me do some of the mazes I didn't do and honestly I still think like I said King's Dominion has one of the best haunts they had more actors in the queue but it's not all of them but and corn stalkers, they had one walking through with like he's like he's late for whatever whatever his face is all messed up, he has a taser, <laughs> like a fake one, obviously. Huh. But he's walking through the queue, as if like he's you know, people are like almost trying to get mad. Then they see it's an actor or they see it's a scary person, so they scream. I just think it's a good dynamic. Like, I think it's very cool in that more parts do it, but the fact, yeah, the fact that King's Dominion is doing it and. Like I said, it was a 15-minute wait, but that made it feel that much shorter, and that was a, you know, 30-second experience that I saw. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, crap. I'm like, and that queue is already good because they theme it. You know, they already have the corn and the, the, hay, the hay bells and everything around, so. That was just a really good moment, you know, that I want more from the haunts, in my opinion. Uh, fear was mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was mid. It has potential. Uh, the lights were good. The sets were great. Uh, but the actors were done. It was like 11. They're like, this is the last night. Uh, 
I don't. I think they were also trying to do a specific scare, like they were trying to be almost like this ghoulish figure floating at you, so they're moving really stiff. But I, it just didn't work for me. Um. So yeah. After that, I went over to three hundred five. You know, got Chicken Shack. I think they changed the breading on Chicken Shack. I don't know if it'll ch stay that way for next year, but it was slightly better. Kind of surprised. Uh, basically used my last meal plan of the year. Yeah, and went to I-305. I was kicking myself a bit because I feel like I should have got a ride, then did the meal plan. But it was like a 10, 15 minute wait. So I was like, let me get the meal, meal so I could die. But it went down for, it wasn't the ride. Oh. It wasn't the ride though. It was someone, someone, they had a lady brought out a wheelchair, but I didn't even see who it was and yeah, I, I think someone got gent rambled up on the ride, basically. So, they ended up opening around 10.42, or excuse me, 11.42, 11.45. That's where I got in, waited for like 15 minutes. So then I think four rides still close. But those are some of the best, probably the best rides I got on 305. And I'm like, it was fall... What, 75 like what the heck like I, I get it was night but like Jesus Christ like the mostly it was the air time I was getting I was like I have those that was the best air time I've gotten on 305 and I don't know why I was getting so much room and I don't know why it was running like the way it was but it was cooking like every the drop got me every single time now it could be because I'm not riding as much but but yeah Everything was so, oh my god! Like I just, I wish that would just be open for at least until Winterfest. But I need some Velasa in my life. I need to go ride Velasa faster. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm saying, like, uh, oh, that's the luxury. And what? So you think the a thirty-five crowds, minute wait? You think the crowds just gonna die after Sunday? I mean, it's a the loss is thirty five minutes right now, bro. So yeah, yeah, but like I'm saying, you think it's gonna die, like after Halloween Horror Nights? Like it's gonna be like twenty minutes. I don't think minutes? it's gonna be. I don't think it's gonna be bad this week, and then next week and stuff going forward, it won't be bad either. I think it's gonna start chilling like now. Yeah, because people are in Christmas, but like I, that's why I'm shocked they're doing it so much after. But I think it's because of how big the event is that they probably feel. Yeah, it's, it's still gonna be busy like through the end of the week. I like that they're doing that. That's cool. But yeah, I'm. I left. I end up running into Brache, uh, zero Brie roll. Uh, go ahead and follow her Instagram. Check out her YouTube. Uh, we've literally seen each other in social media passing for the longest time and finally was able to meet. Uh, so that was cool. That was awesome. Hopefully we get some Twisted Timbers rides for Winterfest. Uh, we are, we just talked about cold rides. I may show up for one visit. Like I went a few times last year, but for real, I ain't about the cold. I, I can go in the heat. Heat's fine with me. Cold, I I shut down. So well, we will see. Uh, about that regardless next year we'll, uh, we'll be getting all the rides I will always be at King uh, King's Minute again so yeah I will just miss 305 because I almost didn't go too I was thinking like oh, I was going to chill but nah I ended up going ended up the like I gotta I'm going to be kicking myself if I don't and yeah it was needed it was good it was great <laughs> but yeah that's that's basically it and for real, y'all, we need a. I need to send stuff out on socials to ask for the questions. But yeah, we could do. Uh, we we'll ask for questions for next time. So ask for, ask for, ask for. So I think we should do that for the uh, anniversary episode as well. So y'all, that's gonna be. I think that's it. Unless you guys have something else you got want to say, RC. Um, then y'all thank you to listen to the rambling tangents 
the craziness, all the guests, and trip reports that we've had over this year. Cedar Some Point, crazy time. Waldemere, Florida, <laughs> Valley, Holiday, Holiday World, like. Oh, so much stuff. Like I said, if you've been here with us all, throughout all of our opinions, even if you disagree with all of us, you're still here, or if you agree with all of us, it doesn't matter. The fact that you've listened and listened to right now, you're a homie. So, stay homie, man. That's what we always say. But for real. Thank you, Nietzsche. If you want to listen and follow us for more, go ahead and follow our socials uh, on Instagram at the High Rollers DMV. And mine at West Tower Coasters. <laughs> uh, ours. Hello. Yes. Uh, cut out. What's up? Uh, your social for Instagram. <laughs> I'll sometimes post on Old Line Airtime. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was sometimes pissed? Sometimes post. Oh, okay. It's well, very rare. Yeah. Not all. But if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can at the High Rollers DMV, and my Twitter slash X at West Howard, or at High Rollers C for Twitter slash X. Sorry. Or you can follow mine, or do both. At West Tower C. And then, uh, if you want to uh, go ahead and look at this in a video format, you can. Uh, go ahead and go to my YouTube. Subscribe, and you'll get every video, uh, every podcast, excuse me, uh, for this that we've had before, Season 1. Now I get to make a Season 1 playlist. Woo, that's cool. Uh, and then if you want to listen to on Spotify or wherever you other podcasts like Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Amazon Podcasts. We're all there. We should be there. We're everywhere. So, accessible is the word. Y'all, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening for a whole year if you have been here this whole time. Truly our homies. Like we say all the time, you never know who you be in this hobby. Stay homie, y'all. Peace out, man. Peace.